And this year marks our 100th anniversary. That's right, 100 years of telling history through the people who make it. This song became an anthem of sorts for the women's movement. I can't keep quiet, no. I know at one point you took some guns out of E.T. and then regretted that, it. That was How a mistake. You... That was a mistake. Um, I never should have done that because E.T. is um, a product of its era. And it, it's not, it, no, no, no film should be revised based on the lenses we now are either voluntarily or being forced to peer through. But uh, E.T. was a film that I was sensitive to the fact that the that the federal agents were approaching a bunch of kids with their firearms exposed. And I thought I would change the guns into walkie-talkies. But E.T. was, and that was because years had gone by, and I, and I, I had changed my, my own views. I should never have messed with the archive of my own work, and I don't recommend anybody really do that. Your, your film, all our movies are a kind of um, measuring, sort of a signpost of where we were when we made them, and what, what the world was like, what the world was receiving when we got those stories out there. So I really regret having done that. What role do you think men, fathers, husbands uh, need to be playing in this conversation around abortion access? Oh, we have to speak up for reproductive rights, absolutely. And, and <laughs> when they have to make these wrenching decisions, it is the hardest decision they'll make. It is traumatic, it is painful, it is harrowing, and the idea that Governor DeSantis or, or Governor whoever the fuck would be involved in that conversation is offensive, it's abhorrent. We should rebel against that possibility. And I think they're realizing now that they've bitten off more than they can chew politically. And they've roused a movement of not only women, but anybody who believes in reproductive rights, anybody who believes in personal autonomy, they've roused a movement. And they're going to pay the price electorally for infringing on women's rights this much. Everyone wants to live a healthy life. Uh, people want access to green space and parks. Um, access to healthy food. What climate justice is saying is that everyone actually does not have access to those things equitably. And that there are certain communities that are disproportionately impacted. We, we can't separate racism from climate justice. We just can't. It's a system. It's a system that we all have been forced to live under. Unconsciously, some of us consciously. And so we can't, we can't separate racism from climate change. They, they go hand in hand. What we're seeing right now is really a targeted effort against the transgender community in America today. You know, I like to quote the Spanish philosopher, uh, Jose Ortega y Gasset, if you do not have an educated citizenry, then the powerful, greedy, and the corrupt will rule. So that's what we see when we see all of this anti-woke, this is anti-education, you know, kind of rhetoric and practices that are happening right now. It's to keep people divided. As the WNBA, we are a microcosm, not just of our communities, but also of a very marginalized group of people. And we were born into a resistance that we carry with, our, with us every day um, that is necessary for us to really just maintain our value, maintain our beliefs. And I think that as athletes, you know, with the power that we have as athletes mm -hmm. today and feeling like nobody wants to hear us and nobody wants to listen and we want to just, you know, you want us to go out there and just play basketball. And them days are, are long gone. 38 million people worldwide are living with HIV. 1.7 million children are living with HIV. New infections continue, even though we know how to prevent infections. There's no vaccine because the virus escapes our immune response. It evolves as your immune system tries to keep it in check. And that's the challenge of developing an HIV vaccine. We tend to think of aging because it's natural, something that we should just accept. But 100 years ago, cancer and heart disease were natural. and couldn't do much about it. Um, we're now at a turning point the way we were in the 1970s with cancer and HIV in the 80s uh, and 90s where uh, we have a much better understanding of what is causing aging. 
Um, our paper that we published just this year is about identifying a universal cause of aging in all of our tissues. Um, and this process turns out to be rather simple to reverse, it turns out. Um, it's probably going to be easier to, to reverse aging than it is to cure HIV. Do you think he has a good chance of re-election? I mean, the majority yeah. of Americans, according to polls, even the majority of Democrats would prefer that he not run again. Well, the Republicans, of course, don't. But it, in terms of the Democrats, I know a little bit about that because I go to their meetings all over. And yes, they'd rather he'd be younger. But they're all for him. Then people are going to say, we're going to, everybody's going to be on board. I mean, there's little, uh, shall we say, sidebar stuff. But by and large, this is, people understand. It's, there's so much at stake in this election that it's really important for us to go full strength, full strength, Joe Biden. I believe in moments of crisis, leadership reputations are made or lost. That's just the reality. That's the harsh reality. An AI, if a computer was like a bicycle, is like a rocket ship or something. It is the most powerful tool probably ever invented, specifically artificial general intelligence, where a computer can start to do tasks that a human can do even better than them. And that is probably coming. And that's probably years away, not decades away. So I think it's the most powerful probably tool ever invented. It's like nuclear energy can light up a city or destroy a city. I think we have to be thoughtful about how we use it. The idea that you stop investing in hard times is actually the opposite of the truth. Some of the best investors in the world make most of their investments when times are hard and prices are low. You can make money investing in clean energy. You can make money um, investing in nature-based carbon removal. We have the Restore Fund to do just that. It pays dividends and that's money, you know? And so the other reason to do it right now is it's cleaner, but it's also cheaper. Do you like to tell the Time 100 Summit why you're running for president? I tell you, this is why you just got the promotion yesterday. You just snuck that, qu that question right in there. Uh, look, I, I think a lot of folks are looking at it. Obviously, I'm looking at it. Um, I am in eternally optimistic. I am. I'm not one of these people that goes around and says, oh, the world is ending, and it's all hell in a handbasket. Look, this is the United States of America. Let's all start with this, we all woke up with a sense of gratitude. Can we all just like start there and be grateful? And so I'm trying to kind of bring that back. My big thing is, is whether it's me or someone else, I, I also think the Re Republican Party, I understand the crowd I'm talking to. But I think we've got this great product, but we are really bad at selling it. We're bad messengers. We're, we're not good at our own marketing. People are solving problems exactly where they live in this way, deeply informed by the needs of their communities. They're problems that need to be addressed sort of like a speedboat. And we're in the middle of, of this window of opportunity that will be closed in a decade. I did learn my work ethic from my dad. Yeah. But I learned so much more from my mom than I ever give her credit for. And oh. that I ever, I, you know. So give Chris credit right yes. now. Yes. I, I don't know. Is it a thing like you kind of give, this is like, I'm not even trying to be funny, but you kind of give the dead parent a lot of credit. I mean, it's, you know? it's so true. Do you think this will be your life's most meaningful work ahead? I hope so. I hope so. I always joke with my mom, who's my manager. I say, Kim K is retiring, and I'm just going to be an attorney. Kim Esquire. So, <laughs> yes. Um, so I was like, so you can go help my siblings. So. Are you? <laughs>